the fans are back and Monday Night Raw still kind of sucks. Yeah, it's bad. What up, Mark? <laughs> Guys, let's get into our Raw review and reaction as we get closer and closer and closer to SummerSlam. We have some. We have one SummerSlam match set up on tonight's Monday Night Raw, and it is from the opening of the show. Nikki A.S.H., your new Raw Women's Champion from last week after she cashed in Money in the Bank during that Rhea Ripley-Charlotte Flair match. And Charlotte Flair was the champion after Money in the Bank. Uh, she comes out, cuts her baby face promo, talking about believing yourself, all the stuff you can overcome, everything, all that stuff Nikki Ash is all about. Fine and dandy, nice baby face promo. The, the crowd was pretty well receptive of her. Uh, she got a decent pop. Uh, she got some reaction from the fans. Then Charlotte comes out. Then Rhea Ripley comes out. They all start beefing with each other. And it's pretty much Charlotte beefing with Rhea and, Char and Nikki. And then, you know, both of them are just beefing with Charlotte. Uh, we all know who the established baby faces are and who the heel is here. Sonya Deville, Adam Pierce come out, announced that triple threat match will be set for SummerSlam. You didn't think a couple weeks ago, SummerSlam, the biggest show of the year right now, would have Nikki Ash in the main event. Nikki the ASH, man. ASH, I'm sorry. Yes, you wouldn't think she would be in the, one of the main events for the Raw Women's Championship. But the Queen challenges Nikki to a match tonight on Monday Night Raw. Uh, what is it? A championship contenders match, which is yeah. a new, like, new thing they're doing now. Whatever um, that means. And she accepted. So that's the way the show started off. Yeah, I mean... We got our match, a matchup for SummerSlam. It should be a good one. Um, it's definitely come out of really left field. It just, you know, it's really basically over the last two weeks, it's actually grown to, to, to this being a match. I mean, who would have thought when we saw her as a superhero character like a month ago that this dude would be in SummerSlam yeah. as a women's champion? So it's just like, hey, things can change real quick. So, I mean, so far, so good. We'll see if this continues to be there. So, some time until SummerSlam, we'll see things change it's kind of early so there's always a chance that someone might lose a title or whatever something they might do something weird so who knows but so far it was a, it was a decent way to start off the show at least and i like that the crowd is behind there yeah for the most part what you're hoping for the crowd would be behind her at least a yeah. little bit so next thing on the show we got damien priest he's taking on sheamus in another one of these championship contenders matches and uh you know priest is back he's pretty much back in full effect he's in the mid card scene right now and he beats Sheamus in this match so he eventually seems like he'll get that US title match it seems like it's all gonna end up at SummerSlam Damian Priest being crowned your new United States champion yeah I mean it makes sense he, Sheamus is kind of just kind of holding it kind of just keeping it warm for somebody to for you know to get somebody young over so, and Priest is, is, is the perfect guy for it SummerSlam be a great way to crown him as the United States champion, hopefully he gets a run and is a big star. That's kind of like the goal right now. I didn't like the whole, broke my nose again, you broke my nose again. Like, it was kind of dumb. But uh, other than that, it was, you know, it's, it's just to get Damian Priest to becoming a star. Yeah, it's just like they lost, their, they're trying to make up for lost time with what happened after WrestleMania and the zombie yeah. thing and him getting hurt or whatever. He's been out for a bit. So they're trying to just, you know, make up on, on, on lost time. We'll see how Humberto Carrillo kind of, Phase, if he comes back into the picture, he's totally out of it. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, next thing that shows AJ Styles and Omas taking on the Viking Raiders for those Raw Tag Team Championships. Uh, be a solid little match in the end. AJ and Omas get the win. Um, you know, Viking Raiders still look pretty solid. I just think there's too much of a comedy act to be taken seriously. I think the Viking, them going too much down the Viking road makes them into a comedy act. But uh, Styles and Omas, you know are being better as a team they're utilizing yeah. each other's skill sets pretty well out there in the match it just seems it's it's all feeling like it's going to lead up to rk bro versus them at, at SummerSlam, especially what happens later on in the in the night yeah i mean shout out to almost i mean i came at, at wrestlemania you can barely move and now he's doing some things aj and him are working pretty decent together this tag team i was so put together and just felt so weird and out of place uh it was just one of those weird pandemic thunderdome things they were just trying and this one actually stuck it hasn't been that bad i can't really hate it i'm not hating it do i love it no but i, I don't hate it it's, it's it's all right and uh yeah i mean rk bro versus omos and aj that's kind of what we're going to so uh, let's just get that rolling already because i haven't seen when's the last time we saw randy it's been like god knows how long yeah so we don't know what randy is but you know omos just heard that you know kevin nash has been working with him on the stone cold podcast is what he said that yeah. he's worked with him so i mean it's a good learning tree to be under so we'll see if that if that plays effect and, and how he progresses when he eventually becomes a single so we'll see how that goes down next thing the show was veer versus drew mcintyre obviously get it, trying to get revenge on drew mcintyre for what he did to shanky last week with all those chair shots so veer mm -hmm. is the one coming up now he has to run through all these guys it's all leading to gender versus drew at SummerSlam. that's the match that we're going to end up getting gender comes out here with veer and his uh lawyer so we all know that guy was gonna take a bump and he eventually did uh ends in a, ends in disqualification veer gets a chair from gender but 
drew a claymore the chair into veer's face causing the disqualification of uh, veer and Ma the maharaja would you know hightail it out of there leaving their esquire you know the esquire the, the the lawyer outside he would get a claymore kick and that'd be the end of that so that's that's where it's headed to it's all going to SummerSlam. yeah i mean i'm not loving this whole booking i like the fact they need an attorney and like that i just felt like that felt dumb and corny yep. hopefully they pick it up and they get something more interesting going into SummerSlam. but yeah they just did they dropped the ball with this one to the start for me in my opinion yeah, it's not, it's not really that much fun. It's got it's got to get something else involved in there. I don't know what it, what they could do to kind not of attorneys. <laughs> yeah, what, what they can kind of do to get this kind of get it going into SummerSlam. We'll see how it goes down. Yeah. Uh, maybe they bring back Heath Slater. It might be kind of funny. Maybe the special guest referee or something like that. Uh, pretty kind of, kind of interesting. But um, something. Next thing the show is Eva Marie and Dewdrop taking on Talia and Tamina. Uh, Seems like another it's a non-title match here. Uh, they're taking the team on. Obviously, Dewdrop's doing all the work. Here comes. Even Maria come in and try to get the pin on Tamina, but then a video pops on the screen and it's a play on her evolution vignette and it's Lily, the doll, doing it, which I thought was absolutely just the corniest shit yeah. ever. It was the cringiest shit yeah. ever. The doll is just not... What, it got no reaction from the crowd. It's just not working. They got to get no. rid of this doll. It is not working good. This will cause Eva Marie to take the pin uh, from Tamina after that, but that it's just, it's just shit. It's really bad. Yeah, none of this stuff is good. I'm still hoping, like, holding out hope that Eva Marie can, like, when, maybe at SummerSlam she'll just show up and actually, like, wrestle and actually do things. I don't know. You know, maybe maybe she's actually a wrestler and they're just kind of pushing this off because what's the point of her being around? It's just, it's, none of this makes any sense. No one cares. She's gorgeous and she's attractive, and that's really all she she, she throws out there because there's nothing else for us to watch. Um, the, the, the Lily thing, I don't know. I mean, I, I get it, but this, is, this Alexa Bliss thing isn't hitting it for me without – any where's bray and there's talks that bray is having some type of creative stuff backstage that he's not about so i, I don't know what's going on but i don't know none of this stuff really is, is is that fun even last week when she tripped over the thing it's just like i don't know what what, what are we talking about it's not really hitting for me and this dude drop ah, it's a miss and what sucks is natty looks like she got hurt so there was like she was limping on you know to, to, to the backstage um, I mean, it sucks for her, but it's not like those tag team titles are that like hotly contested that it's, it's they, they keep them on and have to drop them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the next thing I show is an interesting one. So we get announces Keith Lee versus Karrion Cross, a rematch from NXT Takeover 30, where Karrion Cross defeated Keith Lee to win the NXT Championship, and they got injured in that match. Subsequently, relinquished the title and then won it back eventually. So this is an interesting one. Now Jeff Hardy is. Obviously, the guy that beat Karen Cross last week, he wasn't here tonight. I heard he was tested positive for COVID, so he'll be out for a couple of weeks. Now, uh, they throw Keith Lee out there. So, this is, should have been a better match. It, they didn't get enough time. It's a slow-paced match. It's not an NXT-style match, obviously. Uh, this is what management wants them to play out. It is what it is. Again, we get the light version of Karen Cross. No Scarlet, no entrance, no cool stuff, none of that stuff. Um, and he gets to win Karen Cross. He chokes out, uh, you know, makes forces Keith Lee to tap out in the chokehold. And a spirit is willing. Can he do it? And he can He taps. Oh. And is Keith Lee two losses in a row since returning from a massively long absence mm -hmm. uh, from an undisclosed reason? Is this reason to panic that Keith Lee may be on the way out eventually when his contract runs out? He could be featured endeavored in another string of cuts that come on later on down the road. Karrion Cross gets the win, but. The damage was done last week in a, in a in a meandering kind of debut, and then again he doesn't get the entrance, doesn't get Scarlet, doesn't get the stuff that makes him special in terms of uh, of a, a presentation. I understand why they put him out last week, right? It was the first Raw in front of a crowd in over eighteen months. I get it; they just want to have star power. They want to have something there. But to bring him back after the way you treated him last week, to bring him back. And again, we get, it's carrying cross light. It's not the same thing. And then he goes out there and he beats another young guy. You're right, that, that you just came back last week too and lost. So you just, you just made him choke, you just had him choke him out, Keith Lee. And now your, your whole point was that let's, we, we need more talent. We gotta get raw, we gotta fill the time. So all, all you did, you buried one guy last week and now you buried another guy this week. And now you're ruined carrying cross on the main roster. You could let, you could let, Last week be last week, and we could have just let, not seen Karrion Cross on, on Raw. No reason to see Raw. Maybe after SummerSlam or Survivor Series time, we bring him on the main roster. We just, the whole package, the whole light show, everything, all the all the, 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 the shitty kebabbles. But no, they do this. It's not helping 
either of them. It's not helping either of them. It's if anything, it's ruining two studs that you need because you can't build anybody and you you have no stars or anything around. Just like what's the point of this? What is the point? Yeah, nobody comes out really looking that great after this. It's just kind of just there. It wasn't a good match. It's not much of a reaction from anybody. It just was no. what it was. We'll see how Keith Lee progresses coming out of this. Does he get a SummerSlam match? Does he get put into something? And Karen Cross, Ooh. it all seems like he's going to be drafted to the main roster after losing his title to probably Samoa Joe or somebody like that in the upcoming uh, future. So we'll see how that goes out. Next thing on the show is an interesting one because now we had Karen Cross, we had Keith Lee, and then we have Dominic Dajakovic, who is now his, uh, T Bar. He's there with Mace and T Bar taking on Mansoor and Mustafa, Mustafa Ali, the new tag team. Uh, they put these guys together and it matches what it is. Mansoor gets the, the roll up win, and Ali and Mansoor get the win. We'll see if they become a tag team. Some for Ali to do, some for Mansoor to do, and they need tag team. So, I mean, I guess it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, they need, they need tag teams. You got the new Ascension here, so you know, just yes. it, is, it is basically what they look like to me. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna say they suck right now. It kind of sucks, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of time and see, and see how this rolls. But they need they need a tag team division. There's really at this point, you might as well just never have a tag team division because like, what's going on? No yeah. one even really cares. I, I can't blame so, them for putting new tag teams out there as long as like they work and then they're booked well and then yeah. it's interesting, so you can get invested in it. But. Yeah. We'll see what happens with that. Next thing on the show was Bobby Lashley coming out to answer, you know, talk about Goldberg and all that stuff like yeah. that. So I was going to take on Goldberg at SummerSlam. match is going to happen. We all know it. Uh, it ends up being Cedric Alexander that comes out and then Shelton Benjamin comes out. They were going to have like a reunion of the Hurt Business, but it just ended up being Lashley taking on both of them at the same time again. We saw this when the Hurt Business first broke up. Uh, they had mm -hmm. a, a handicap match and he just destroys both guys at the same time and gets the win. They should have never broken up the Hurt Business in the first place, but... In terms of having Lashley look like an absolute monster going in against the unstoppable Goldberg, I guess, it makes sense in that vein, but it just sucks for Shelton and it sucks for Cedric. Also, Cedric on the mic needs to stop yelling so much because his voice when he yells doesn't sound all that great over the oh, mic. Shelton said it. <laughs> yeah, Shelton said it. So he just I think he should tone his voice down because when he raises his voice level a little bit too much, it sounds he's very like very na nasally. Yeah, nails on a chalkboard type of thing. So he gotta chill with that. Unless he's going for that. I mean that's another whole another thing. But squash match, it was what it was. They shouldn't have broke up the hurt business to begin with. So you can't no. squash or bury Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander any more than they already are and have been since the hurt business broke up. Yeah, I mean this was what it was. It was just to make Bobby Lashley look, look a lot better and to make him look like a strong beast. Yep. But we know that already. We I, I, I don't think you have to bury guys. We know what Bobby Lashley is. He, he's a freaking nature. He's a monster. He's a, he's the he's the champion. He has the belt. Him having the belt makes him the guy, and he's that huge. And it's Goldberg. It's a fifty-five year old Goldberg. Like, I mean, he doesn't look menacing. He he looks smaller than Bobby. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like not like like he's in better shape than Bobby because because he's not. So it's just. Well, what are we even bothering for, honestly? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't make a ton of sense. It's just, it's kind of, it kind of is what it is. man. <laughs> Yeah, he is. It's just, yeah. it's, it's like kind of weird. Uh, but still, like they just want to make it, um, you know, that way that he has, he's dominating and does all that stuff like that. So you know, that, that's what they're asking for. Um, all right. So the next thing on the show was John Morrison versus Riddle. Uh, they're they're taking on each other. And before this, we had John Morrison and Miz backstage, kind of colluding with AJ and Omos. Uh, so the match happens. It's going down. Uh, Riddle seems to be getting the upper hand. He seems like he's going to hit the, the floating bro. But then mm -hmm. AJ and Omos break the scooter. Uh, so that obviously distracts him. Allows Morrison to pick up the win. Uh, and then you have AJ getting in the ring afterwards, beating down Riddle, putting him in the Styles Clash. No. After the match is over. Oh, no. Yep. Stepping over. Clash and no, Randy Orton has the chat. The crowd was chanting for Orton to come out, so we'll eventually see Orton probably make the save eventually and then set up and ramp up the feud going into SummerSlam RK Bro versus AJ Nomas. Yeah, this is all that we want to see. Um, I want to see RK Bro back. It's been a while since you know, like they were they were hot. I mean, they were fun. It was a, it was a fun time. They they worked well with each other. It was like a kind of put together randomly and it just it clicked. It worked. So I just I'm excited for that. And it's this is one of the, 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 the stuff I'm looking forward to going to SummerSlam is this match right here. I, I, I want to see RK Bro. And again, almost and AJ Styles are growing on me. They've been champions since WrestleMania. It's been a while, and they've, 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 they've done good work. So this is one of the small things on Raw that's actually like, hey, this is really good. I, I'm enjoying that. Yeah. And then the next thing we got was 24 7 championship match. Now, 24 7 championship having being contested in regular rules inside of a ring doesn't make a ton of sense. But this is what we got. We got the new champion, Reginald, taking on R Truth. Now, 
is low-key Reginald making uh 24-7 championship actually kind of entertaining to see again because of all the flips and acrobatics that he kind of does the, the stuff this guy can do is probably unlimited. He is probably limitless um, in that aspect of the stuff that he can do out there. Uh, a lot of flips and jumps around. He beats our truth uh, Does yeah. a crazy dive that we've seen Ricochet doing NXT when he was built when he's uh, feuding with uh, Velveteen Dream. Uh, the big dive outside of the ring and lands on his feet. You know, totally. You know. Uh, gets past everybody. So he could make the title fun if he can move his acrobatics into a more comedic cinematic backstage different location type of stuff that 24 7 championship should be about yeah i mean the, the, it's a joke title it's you know it's, it can't be taken serious but if you have some fun stuff like this guy he's obviously like a freak athlete and a gymnast yep. or whatever then the man just bounces he's like he's got springs all over himself but uh yeah i mean just keep doing that it's, it's something it's filler um i can't believe reginald's still around and he's still around he looks like he's gonna be around for the foreseeable future so Let's just see him bounce all over the place. Why the hell not? Yeah, he could make that title actually entertaining to see him on the show. So maybe that's a good thing about him giving that in that title. And the next thing that shows the main event is Nikki A.S.H. taking on Charlotte Flair uh, in a contenders match. Obviously, they have the triple threat match set up for SummerSlam. So the match is going on. It is what it is. You know, it's a solid little match. In the end, you have Nikki A.S.H. going for the cross body that she used to beat Charlotte last week for the title. She uses it here, but hits it, but then gets rolled into a pin by Charlotte. So Charlotte gets to win. Then you have Then you have a promo in the end, them beefing with each other. And then all it is, is like Nikki Ash is funny. She's like, I'm almost a superhero and I almost could have beat you today, but you didn't, right? So like almost doesn't really count, but whatever. Uh, that's her whole shtick. And then, you know, she challenges her to a rematch next week. So repeat city, we're going to get another match between the two next week. And that's pretty much it. Same old Raw, same old results. Fans are in the in attendance, but Raw still kind of sucks. Yeah, this was just a repeat. Uh, you, we, you already announced the match three hours earlier, and then you're just going to be like, oh, we're going to have a match tonight. Okay, and then we're going to see a match next week, and then we're going to have some type of, you know, Rio, we're going to get in yeah. there and do, you know, they're going to have like, how many combinations can we have of this match? And, you know, it's just, that's what we're going to get. So that's Raw. Yeah, that's Raw in a nutshell. That's a review and reaction of another kind of dis abysmal run than Monday Night Raw. Nothing special. Oh. Same old thing. Uh, same old shit when it comes to Monday Night Raw. Just fans in attendance, and they haven't really changed much. But we'll see how things go as they ramp up the build towards SummerSlam. Hopefully, the go-home for SummerSlam is actually exciting, uh, and the build for SummerSlam is actually exciting, because this is the biggest uh, show of the year so far. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Hit the chair in the corner for hits you first, and sub to the channel. And without further ado, if it's worth it, I'll do the job. Later, Marks. Stop.